Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Investing Iguana, where we help you grow your money with smart and simple investing tips. I'm your host, Iggy, and today we're going to talk about how to read the income statement with logic and common sense. The income statement is one of the most important financial statements that you need to understand if you want to invest in stocks. It shows you how much money a company makes or loses from its operations over a certain period of time, usually a quarter or a year. It also shows you how much of that money is left for the shareholders after paying all the expenses. The income statement can help you answer some key questions about a company, such as A. Is the company profitable or not? B. How fast is the company growing its sales and earnings? C. How efficient is the company in managing its costs and expenses? D. How does the company compare to its competitors and industry peers? But before you can answer these questions, you need to know how to read and analyze the income statement. And that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to break down the income statement into its main components and explain what they mean and why they matter. We're also going to use some simple examples and analogies to make it easy and fun for you to follow along. So let's get started. The income statement has four main sections, revenue, expenses, income, and earnings per share. Let's go over each one of them. Revenue is the amount of money that a company earns from selling its products or services. It's also called sales or top line because it's usually the first line on the income statement. For example, let's say you own a lemonade stand and you sell 100 cups of lemonade for $1 each in a day. Your revenue for that day would be $100. That's how much money you made from selling lemonade. But revenue doesn't tell you how much money you actually get to keep. You also have to consider your costs and expenses. Expenses are the costs that a company incurs to generate revenue. They include things like cost of goods sold, operating expenses, interest expenses, and taxes. Cost of goods sold, COGS, is the direct cost of producing or acquiring the products or services that a company sells. It includes things like raw materials, labor, and overhead. For example, let's say your lemonade stand has some costs associated with making lemonade. You have to buy lemons, sugar, water, cups, and ice. You also have to pay yourself a wage for your time and effort. Let's say these costs add up to 50 cents per cup of lemonade. Your cogs for selling 100 cups of lemonade would be $50. Operating expenses, OPEX, are the indirect costs of running a business. They include things like rent, utilities, marketing, salaries, research and development, and depreciation. For example, let's say your lemonade stand has some operating expenses as well. You have to pay rent for the space where you set up your stand. You also have to pay for electricity to run your blender and refrigerator. You also have to spend some money on advertising your lemonade stand on social media. Let's say these expenses add up to $20 per day. Interest expenses are the costs of borrowing money from lenders or creditors. They include things like interest payments on loans, bonds, or mortgages. For example, let's say you borrowed $100 from your friend to start your lemonade stand business. You agreed to pay him back with 10% interest per year. That means you have to pay him $10 in interest every year until you pay back the principal amount. Taxes are the payments that a company has to make to the government based on its income. They include things like federal income tax, state income tax, local income tax, and sales tax. For example, let's say your lemonade stand business is subject to a 20% income tax rate. That means you have to pay 20% of your income as taxes to the government. Income is the amount of money that a company has left after paying all its expenses. It's also called profit or bottom line because it's usually the last line on the income statement. There are different types of income that measure different levels of profitability. A. Gross profit is the difference between revenue and COGS. It shows how much money a company makes from selling its products or services before accounting for any other expenses. B. Operating income is the difference between gross profit and OPEX. It shows how much money a company makes from its core business operations before accounting for any interest or taxes. C. Pre-tax income is the difference between operating income and interest expenses. 
It shows how much money a company makes before paying any taxes. And D. Net income is the difference between pre-tax income and taxes. It shows how much money a company makes after paying all its expenses. It's also called net profit or net earnings. For example, let's calculate these types of income for your lemonade stand business based on our previous assumptions. Gross profit equals revenue, COGS equals $100 to $50 equals $50. Operating income equals gross profit, OPEX equals $50 to $20 equals $30. Pre-tax income equals operating income, interest expenses equals $30 to $10 equals $20, net income equals pre-tax income, taxes equals $20, $20 times 0 0.2 equals $16. As you can see, your net income is much lower than your revenue because you have to deduct all your costs and expenses along the way. Earnings per share, EPS, is the amount of net income that a company earns per share of its common stock outstanding. It shows how profitable a company is on a per share basis. To calculate EPS, you simply divide net income by the number of shares outstanding. EPS equals net income divided by shares outstanding. For example, let's say your lemonade stand business has 10 shares outstanding and you earn $16 in net income in a day. Your EPS for that day would be EPS equals $16 divided by 10 equals $1.60. That means you earn $1.60 per share of your lemonade stand business. EPS is an important metric for investors because it helps them compare the profitability of different companies based on their share price. For example, let's say there are two lemonade stand businesses in your neighborhood, yours and your competitors. Your competitor also sells 100 cups of lemonade for $1 each in a day but has lower costs and expenses than you do. COGS equals 40 cents per cup. OPEX equals $10 per day. Interest expenses equals $5 per day. Taxes equals 20% of income. Shares outstanding equals 10. Let's calculate their net income and EPS for comparison. A. Gross profit equals revenue. COGS equals $100. 40 cents times 100 equals $60. B. Operating income equals gross profit. OPEX equals $60 to $10 equals $50. C. Pre-tax income equals operating income. Interest expenses equals $50 to $5 equals $45. D. Net income equals pre-tax income. Taxes equals $45. $45 times 0 0.2 equals $36. And E. EPS equals net income divided by shares outstanding equals $36 divided by 10 equals $3.60. As you can see, your competitor has higher net income and EPS than you do because they have lower costs and expenses than you do. This means that they are more profitable than you are on a per share basis. However, EPS alone doesn't tell you everything about a company's performance or value. You also need to consider other factors such as growth rate, dividend policy, valuation multiples, competitive advantage, industry trends, etc. That's why it's important to look at other financial statements such as the balance sheet, cash flow statement, annual report, etc., as well as other sources of information such as news articles, analyst reports, customer reviews, etc., when evaluating a company or an investment opportunity. And that's what we're going to do in our next videos. So stay tuned for more investing tips from the Investing Iguana. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on the Investing Iguana.